Hey everyone, it's Katrina of Paper, Pens and Coffee. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time, thank you for stopping by. I rarely do this, but it's a new year. I'm trying new things. I'm being simplistic, simplify, simplification. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would love to see more from me, please subscribe and click all of the things, the bell thing. I'm not going to be fancy. I'm not going to put any things that pop in onto the screen and then pop out of the screen to remind you. It is a cold, wintry day in the Midwest, and I decided I would try some of the new paints that I just purchased for myself from Rangers Inks, the Dina Weeklies. They are different paints than I've been using before. I've just been using paints from Target, which are acrylic paints. They've changed their formulas or something when they change their brand names. I was gifted this one by one of my creative friends about two years ago. This is the only one I had. It's called Sedona. Making sure the camera gets it. Well, I researched, I hemmed, I hawed. I didn't want to get paints in the same colors of everyone else that I follow. Just because I am trying to be, besides simple, I'm trying to be authentic to my style, to what I like to do. Therefore, this is one of the first of few videos I'm going to record. I am just trying something out. I watch videos that people record it like this and they have great success. And I've watched other videos that people record like this and they don't have great success. I'm just putting it out there in the universe. Who knows? The reason I'm recording videos, the reason I am taking the time to set up my cameras, making sure the dogs are staying quiet in the background is that I feel that I have something to share and if you want to share it nowadays, you have to share it through the YouTubes or Instagram or even over on Ko-Fi or Patreon. Well, Patreon gives me a full-blown anxiety attack. I was thinking of doing Patreon and I shut that down in a hot minute. I am, though, going to give a go on coffee. K-O. FI. I might put a little blurb right here so you can know what I'm talking about. My link will be down below in the description box. I have some printables that I have created in my shop. Thank you to all that have purchased from me so far. I really appreciate that. Uh, those funds are going to go towards another goal of mine to use for filming. I haven't decided exactly what yet. I guess that's proper English, where I'm going to use it for. Once I do, I absolutely will put it in the goal section for you. Who knows, by the time I edit this, this video, I might have my goal set up already. So what I'm going to do today is show you what I just created, and then I'm going to recreate it for you for the ones that might want to try it at home. I just want to make sure I have enough room on my board here. Okay, this is a junk journal that I made myself, meaning that I gutted it, I made the signatures, I glued it in place, and I'm creating in it. I decided if you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know this story, but I am going junk journaling this year. I have put it off. I've mentioned over on Instagram also, I don't get junk journaling still. I know there's no hard rules. There's nothing that you're supposed to follow along, just create and express yourself. Yet, I notice a lot of people with the same color palettes or the same ideas and they all look the same to me. And that's great, but my brain registers it I don't want to do that. Maybe it's my ADHD talking, maybe it's my autism talking, or maybe it's just little Katrina who finally gets to have all of these wonderful toys as a grown up and get to play with it. So I'm just gonna show you this quickly before I do my demonstration. 
This was a book that I originally had pockets in, meaning that I followed a video by, I don't want to butcher her name, so I think it's 49 Dragonflies. So I watched her video almost three years ago. I'll link right here, my flip through of it. And I was fascinated by making the pockets. That's all I did with it. I didn't do anything else with it. I didn't know what you were supposed to do once I made it. So I checked it off my creative list. Well, approaching 2023 saying, we're just going to simply do things and just give it a try without any rules. So I got it out. I re-gut it, meaning I ripped everything out. And then I had a craft paper, Archer and Olive, which I didn't fully use because at the time, and I still don't really like craft paper, but I noticed a lot of people use craft paper for these things. So why not join in on that? So what I did is I re I let's see if we can come in just low without getting blurry. I made four signatures. Signatures, if you're not familiar with that word, all it means is a bunch of papers sewn together. It's fancy dancy, isn't it? So I re-sewed the signatures. Let's see if I can show you this one. There you go, almost. I used some of my um, embroidery floss, nothing fancy. Once I got all of this, I'm gonna do a more detailed video if you guys are interested. I sewed it on a piece of cardboard, which was the width of the spine. Let's go back up. Don't get blurry, please. And we're getting blurry. Let's see if we can focus again. Hang on, guys. Okay, I'm back. For some reason, my camera focusing, once I have focus it too much, it gets blurry. So I'm back. So anyways, I was telling you, I glued them in here, and I used a extra strong Elmer's glue. I didn't get anything fancy. I didn't want to spend the money saying, oh, well, maybe I'll make lots of them, but I just found a strong Elmer's glue that had the right chemicals in it and proceeded to glue in it. I clamped it down for about 24 hours and look, it is there to stay. So real quick flip through, you guys are the first to really see what I've done so far. Not a lot, it's not fancy. I already pre-decorated my cover with art marks. This is from a local museum in Wisconsin. This is from a book I found at the thrift store, which I liked, and the title was Family Reading Time. So I thought that was really neat. I did make a title page with my name on it though, just like you do in any journal. This writing is from LaQuisha Hall of Confidence Canvas. She uh, sent me this about a year and a half ago and it was on clear sticker paper. So it just melted like butter into the page. Here is my word of 2023. I think I'm gonna be a little better and just bring it to the camp to you guys. Is it gonna go blurry again? Here. There we go. I don't know if you guys can read that. Like I said, this is just artist in the raw. Um, simplify to reduce to basic essentials. Simply without ambiguity. And simple, plain, uncomplicated. Well, as artists, we know nothing is ever uncomplicated or complicated, so... This is what I did. The background paper was actually designed by my husband who is trying his hand at artwork. And then I did the rest of this with some um, things that I got from the dollar store. I've been trying my hand at the junk journaling in January. That is with um, the collaboration Get Messy Art and Meg Journals. 
on Instagram and here on the YouTubes. So some of these are those pages. I was trying to make it in a smaller format and that didn't work out for me. So I readjusted it. So one of the prompts was, I believe, stars. So I did that with some messy writing note to myself behind it. Another one was pockets. So let me see, let me go this way. So I made a pocket out of a envelope, a junk envelope. And then also I think there was a prompt called hiding. So I hid this. Over here, I put in a tip in from the original pockets of the book. And this was a side pocket. That was one of my favorite ones to make was a side pocket. Will I put anything in there this year? Who knows? If I do, I'll let you guys know. This is the other side of the side pocket. So all I did was get some washi tape and tape it in there. Here is my first attempt using Dina Winkley's um, printables. She has a supporter group over on Facebook and you have get access to that. So all I did was write a scribbly note to myself. I then just scribbled with some of my um, waxy crayons. If I really wanted to, I could take a water pen and, and make it look like watercolor, but I don't want to. And then I used some of my gel art pens through the, I can't think of it, my brain will not let me think of the word. So I probably will put the word right here when I do edit this. And these are some of more of her art marks. I just used my hole puncher to make them. Moving on, this is me practicing drawing, your life, your journey. And then I remembered in high school and in college, I would draw the eyes over and over and over again. Well, did I know that was a autistic and ADHD thing? So I'm like, well, why not start it up again? Something to practice. Here's an another part. I just glued this one down because it just had one page of it. Here's another pocket I originally made. Pretty clever. And then I believe one was about postage from the January prompts, something of that nature, or travel. So what I did is I just made a collage with some of the items. I think this one and this one was from the January Get Messy people. They gifted this to you if you went to their Zoom. I have some stamps from my collection, and then I have some cancellation stamps from my pen pal in the UK, Melanie. Hello. So I thought that was clever. This, I was just doing art marks and background. And one thing I do is I love making backgrounds, but I hate covering them up. See, if you just cover it up, even like that, you're missing out on something. That's just my opinion. So I just kept it like that, and then I used a Sticker that says remember, and this is just some tissue paper from an old pattern that I have. So I thought that was cool. Stencils, that's the word we're looking for. Then I use stencils. This, which is going to be in another video, I made some background papers, which I, what I ended up doing is putting it through the scanner and making them into PDFs. So you'll be able to use my background papers for whatever you want. This is just one of those, um, not laminates, uh, what do you call it? Um, yeah, I am so sorry guys, my brain is not working today for the big words. So I just drew a face on it and then I just carefully glued it down trying to hide the tape. And then on the actual paper, I drew that. So I have acetates. These are acetates. Um, I'm still a beginner in some things, and I thought these were the acetates you could run through your printer to print stuff on, and no, no, they're not. So this one I just glued down. I used my gel, gel 
crayons or whatever you want to call them and just scribbled all over and then I used my marking pen and I just put one little piece of bling there so that's that page one of the other prompts was stickers for the January journaling so I just lay down the stickers. I've joined a couple times of the BFF sticker swapping thing. I get things from May from Paper Treats and a couple of my other pen pals and creative friends who've sent me stickers. So I just thought that was a, that was actually a lot of fun putting the stickers down randomly. It reminded me a lot of when I was little and you get those sticker books and you bring it to school and then you want to get that scratch a sniff sticker that Sally has, but Mary got it first. This is another simple page I just did. This is the creativity of Mandy Ford. It's from one of her soul care kits from last year. And I finally found a use for it. So I just cut them out. What was really neat is these are her own pictures and she put them like in Polaroids. So you could use them however you want. So I just kind of glued them in there like pretending that they were mine. <laughs> and the back in the day when you just put pictures on a piece of paper and didn't care if the acid ate them or not. I did find a little poem or saying or an advice from a mushroom from an unknown. Be down to earth, sprout new ideas, know when to show up, stay well-rounded, start from the ground up. So... That's kind of me in 23. All right, now to the piece of resistance, to the main event. Here are the, you know, weekly paints that I got. I purchased sand, sage, olive, cheddar, gilt, tangelo, turquoise, and there's Sedona. And this is what I created after I rub the samples in. Just to let you know, I just did a little line at the top and used my finger and they dried really quickly, really quickly. So that's really nice on this craft paper. And as you can see, they don't, they don't leak through on this craft paper. I think this is 1, 160 GSM. So what I proceeded to do in the fashion that my husband's been trying out is that he puts dots of paint all over. He saw someone on Instagram doing it. And then you use like a squeegee and then you squeeze it down. So that's what I did this morning. I don't want to unfocus it, so I'm going to bring it up just a little. I just did a little desert scene with trying out all of them and then squeegeed it down. And of course you get leftover paint on that. So I just did what we did with the other projects we've been trying out. I just wiped it on a couple pieces of paper. Will I use them? I don't know. I might just send them in happy mail so other people can enjoy these beautiful color combinations. So then the main part of the project is, is that I made a little tag, which I used the, this tag part is from Mandy Ford in one of her kits I have. This is the hole puncher. I just put another piece of paper there. And this is from an Illustrated Faith um, stamp collection, I think about a year ago. I don't know if they still sell it, but I was just using this flower. I don't know if it'll show up or not. On the camera, there we go. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate. Stick around. I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. I just opened up a new page, got some other supplies that I'm going to need. If you want to do it with a grommet, I call them grommets. I might be saying the wrong thing. You need your, as I called it, the crocodile, but it's a cropodile. But these ladies I used to hang out in my scrapbooking days, we used to call it the crocodile. So if you don't have one of these, I'm sorry. I don't know what else you will use to put one of these in it and have it stay. If you want a hole puncher, I may or may not do that again. A rounder, 
one of my favorite tools as you've known if you watch my other videos and if you have thank you so much we're going to do our our paints and then if I do any stamping because these I think match really well with those paints these are for also from Ranger I think Tim Holtz yeah distress oxide chip sapphire and mermaid lagoon all right boys and girls here we go so all I'm going to do is randomly put some paints and usually you go and do it at the top and I just saw I said uh, bleh. I just saw that I had a piece of acetate so I'm going to do what a lot of the other artists do and make a little imprint of that before I squeegee it down so that was Sedona now we're going to do some Telangelo in one of Dina's meetup things she said that this color and this color are a great combination whoops turquoise so that's why I purchased the turquoise okay we're going to do a little gilt I'm not really into gold but I thought this was really cool let's see how wide is our acetate okay don't want to go any further now what's really neat when you do this dot painting that we've learned about it it like forms a different picture but whatever you have drawn before it like stays in place you'll see in a minute here's some cheddar so maybe we'll put a little cheddar here well, that's a lot of cheddar then we have sage Trying to get the air out. There we go. Barely, if you're going to draw like this, you barely have to push on these things. That's what I learned about my Sedona the first time I used like way too much. Also, what's really cool about these paints, if you haven't used them yet, is that you can um, wet your brush and then water them down and then use them almost like watercolors. And remember there's no right or wrong way I don't know who started this movement if anyone does please put it in the comments so I can give the proper proper credit but here we go so that's all I did now I'm just going to put the acetate whoops I'm going to move this out of the way real quick I'm going to put the acetate here and just kind of smush it down just to make sure it's all on the acetate okay so as you can see so this will go to the side and dry and then I can use that for something else in junk journaling okay then you get a squeegee and what we've learned is that you need a squeegee kind of with an angle to really grab all the paint you don't need to do that you can use your trusty handy credit card that you use for scraping but because see how wide that is to the page and how wide this is you'll get everything at the same time and then we also notice the one with the angle worked better than the flat one so let's give this a go I don't know how much it's actually going to go down because I already took some of it away but let's see okay are we in there okay here we go here goes nothing remember there's no right or wrong way and there's no rules of how to do this oh nice nice I like it different okay let me put the clips back on real quick so you guys can see it because the more you put in your journals, your art journals, the more chunky it gets and the more it just wants to close in on itself. Can you see that? That's pretty cool. And there's really no paint left over, but there's paint left over here. And in my book, Waste Not, Want Not. So I'm just going to take a plain piece of paper and then I'm just going to angle it 
and push down and see what happens. Okay, there's still paint there. So I'm just gonna turn it the other way. Easy cheesy lemon squeezy. There's still paint there, so I'm just gonna go like this. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, I think I want to keep that. And when it dries, it'll be kind of 3D-ish. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Sorry I keep saying that, but I had some trouble with my focusing. And I want to make sure I have it all. Okay, just one more. And as you notice, when you scrape it down and they get mixed up, it'll start getting a little muddy. So if you don't want that, then just scrape as much as you want and then call it a day. We usually use baby wipes, but right now I'm just gonna get that. Okie dokie. So it's starting to dry, that's different. If you wanted to go the other way, you could, or you could start doing art marks. And what I mean by that is, this is my favorite. It's a um, Fabric Castle Pit Art Black Big Brush Black 199. And what you do is just, let's see here, this dry right here. I just lay it down. Kind of make opposite little black marks. Then if I want to do a little more there, I just go like this. Pretty cool. Or you could then just do a on the point without much pressure. Loopity do. Or you can just drag it and whatever hits the page. Or you can do a little in the little design like this. Whoops, let's see if it'll work. See, the possibilities in art are endless. I think that's why, one reason I like it. Okay, so there's that. Let's move that to the side. Let's see. Okay, so this is what we're working. Wait, where's the first one? Where's that the first one? Okay, this is what we're working with. And we're going to make a tag out of it, real simple. This is dry. That's one thing I like about this acrylic paint. It dries very fast. So I'm just going to randomly cut it down. And round the corners. One more time. I think we're going to use that stamp for some decoration. And since none of the turquoise made it in to it, like in my first one, the turquoise made it in, we're going to use this. What I've learned when you're going to just randomly stamp in junk journaling, don't try to be precise, like, oh, I want it exactly like that, because I don't know. It just like if you do it more randomly, the more junky it looks, I guess. <laughs> That's the thing. It was kind of hard to let go of that, but I just go like that. And there. See? Ooh. Okay, so we have that one. Let's put that back over there. And I think I'm going to use a little of from the other one. So there's two ways when you're... No, okay, like I just said, there's no rules, but there are two ways like in your ripping paper if you want a certain thing. So if I rip it this way, I don't know if this will show as much. Here, let's try this. If I rip it this way, you get the edge of the actual paper, right? Now if I rip it this way, the other way, then you're just getting that part. 
So you're kind of getting the under part when you rip it one way. So it depends on what you're, how you want it to look, is what I'm saying. This is very delicate. This was from a pack that I bought whew, three years ago from my creative friend Heidi P. She used to sell little knickknacks of old papers and whatnots on our Etsy shop. And so I grabbed one of them. Kind of holding a piece of history in here. This was someone's handwriting and a letter. So I'm just going to bring it like that because the two edges are the same. Actually, instead of another rip piece, I'm going to use my hole puncher. And another hole puncher. And yeah. So I'm going to glue one of these on. I just used the dollar, dollar twenty-five store tape. Save money where you can. Only problem is on the older paper it have a hard time peeling off. There we go. Okay, and then just stick that there. And I'm going to do something I didn't do on the other one. I'm going to kind of make like a, um, you know, when you do those whole, whole saver things. A homemade one. Numerous people have shown how they do this online, but actually since we're going to put a thingamajig in it, those aren't called brads. I'm sorry, guys, but you know the name of it. I'm going to punch the hole. Can you see it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And you insert it. And then use the other contraption. Here's the alligator part. Munch. Ta-da! So you have kind of like a little design under it. That's cool. Okay, nothing on the back of it. Okay, and then the last thing, and I don't, well, we have blue there. So let's pick some, ooh, how about the green? Can untangle it. I'm just going to go like that. This is really simple. You can make it more fancy dancy if you want. All I do is just get some of my embroidery floss, bring it together, insert it through the hole. Go to your new home. There we go. And then just make a loop. Bam. That's it. Let's bring our book back. Oops. Let's see. Yeah, it's supposed to be this way. And I haven't trimmed this off yet because I don't know what I'm going to do. If you were really wanting to, you could undo all of the threads because there's four in each strand and make it kind of poofy. I'm not going to add anything else to this. I'm just keeping it very simple. Because, let's see, that looks good. Okay, then you just do this. I might come back later because there's no words on here. I mean, besides these. And I might do some scribble writing. You guys, I think that's the technical te term of it. It's when you're journaling and you're not going for penmanship or correct spelling. It's just a note to you. And you just write, 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 write. A lot of um, journalers and artists do that kind of like for therapy. You're just getting your thoughts out on the paper, but it's just for you. But at the same time, you know, no one really has to know what's reading. It's just between you guys. You and the book, I mean. So... Ooh, excuse me if you can hear my stomach. I do apologize. That is embarrassing. So what I'm going to do here is put some tape down. And then I'm just going to... I 
If you're a kid of the 80s, remember making those yarn coasters with double-sided tape. Same concept. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And I'm just going to pull it off just a little. And go like this. Or maybe not. Alrighty, and that's it. So those are the paints I have. I'm looking forward to using them a lot more. Here are two samples. Same paints. I used all of the paints. Six, nine, six, seven, eight. Eight paints. There's one way I did it, and here's another way I did it. Thank you so much for joining me today on this new journey in 2023. This is my first video of the year, so Happy New Year. And I'm looking forward to doing more of these type of videos for you. If you are a follower, please thumbs it up. If you're not a follower yet, click that subscribe, subscribe, ah, subscribe button. I cannot talk today. Sorry, dyslexia. And also, I do post in my community feed. I am trying to get better at that. So if you scroll through through the community and you see my post, give it a thumbs up. All right, guys, until next time, remember, where is it? Oh, I just have a little messy hands, happy life. See you next time. Bye. Thank you for watching. Remember, messy hands, happy life. See you next time. Bye.